Good afternoon and thank you very much for joining today's civil society seminar dedicated to the outcome of the ECB's strategy review. My name is Marie-Therese Bitterlich and I work in communications here at the ECB. I'll be moderating this event today. I'm delighted to be joined by Frank Smets. Frank is the Director of General Economics here at the ECB and as the coordinator of the strategy review process, able to share your first-hand insights onto the strategy review process and of course, on the new monetary policy strategy itself. We're delighted to have you. To get a better understanding of what this new strategy is all about, what has changed, what has remained, and what it means for us as citizens, we'll be structuring this seminar slightly differently than usual. We'll be starting with a conversation between Frank and myself for about 25 minutes before we'll be opening the floor to your questions for the remaining half an hour of this event. A little bit of housekeeping just before we get started. In case you have any technical problems or questions, please feel free to reach out to the colleagues in the background via the chat function and just make sure that you're chatting with all panelists. As we mentioned in the invitation of the seminar, we'll be recording the seminar and uploading it to the ECB's website afterwards. With that out of the way, let's get started. Frank, last week the President announced the outcome of the ECB's strategy review. The President referred to the new strategy as a strong foundation that will guide us in our conduct of monetary policy in the years to come. Can you explain what this new strategy is all about and how it differs from the previous one? Uh, sure, Marie-Therese, and, and let me first of all welcome uh, the participants to this webinar on, on the new monetary policy strategy. Um, one way of uh, describing uh, the new monetary policy strategy is to use the words of uh, Chair Powell uh, of the, the American Central Bank when he introduced uh, their new strategy. It is to say that it's an evolution, uh, not a, a revolution. And the main reason uh, for that is that, of course, the strategy is anchored in, in the treaty, uh, which gives uh, the primary mandate uh, to the ECB of maintaining price stability. So the ECB is requested to stabilize, to maintain the, the value of uh, our money, of our currency, the, the euro. And that's uh, the best way in which it can contribute to, to the welfare and the well-being of uh, your area uh, citizens. And of course, that's very much uh, an anchor. I mean, the strategy in the end is uh, about how to achieve uh, that uh, mandate. Um, but of course, uh, the last strategy was about 18 years ago in, in 2003, and many things have uh, changed. Uh, and of course, and for that reason, uh, an update of the uh, strategy was, uh, was overdue. And this is really uh, why uh, President Lagarde, when she became president in, at the end of 2019, uh, sort of initiated this, uh, this whole process. I mean, the biggest change is probably that uh, we've moved uh, from a relatively inflationary uh, environment into a sort of a low interest rate, low inflation uh, environment. Why is that important uh, for central banks? Uh, and this is a global phenomenon. So uh, everywhere in, in the world, uh, central banks had, uh, were constrained in terms of using their traditional uh, interest rate uh, instrument by this low interest rate environment. Why? Because interest rates can go negative, but not uh, infinitely. So they cannot go very uh, negative. And so central banks have used other tools to uh, try to achieve their uh, price stability objective in that uh, context. So that's one important uh, reason. Uh, there have been many other structural uh, changes uh, in the past uh, two, two uh, decades. Uh, one is the process of globalization. Uh, remember the integration of China in the world economy. That has put uh, downward pressures on international uh, prices. Uh, another important structural change has been digitalization. Uh, think about you know, the emergence of e-commerce. Again, everything else equal, this, this has a downward impact on, on, on prices. And so it, it, it was important to analyze those phenomena and to see what are the implications for uh, our monetary policy strategy. And now I have not uh, yet mentioned, uh, of course, what is probably the biggest uh, challenge for humankind in the coming decades, which is climate change and uh, the, the policies to combat uh, uh, climate change. That's also 
uh, part of uh, the strategy. And so the, the purpose of, of the whole process was really to, to make our uh, strategy fit for purpose for, uh, for the coming years. Thank you very much, Frank. What do you think is the most important change that came with this new strategy? Well, there have been uh, a number of uh, changes and, and we, can, we can talk about those. Uh, but let me maybe first focus on what is the core of the ECB uh, monetary policy strategy, and that is how to formulate and maintain uh, price stability. I mean, the most visible change is probably the, the 2% symmetric inflation target. So the, the governing council uh, considers that in order to maintain uh, price stability, it best aims for inflation to be at 2% in uh, the medium term. And let me emphasize two uh, aspects of this uh, target. First of all, there's a small inflation buffer of 2%, uh, which is important in order to reduce the risks of uh, deflation and to give some uh, policy space for interest rate policies in response to these inflationary shocks. Uh, the, the other uh, um, uh, feature of, of this target, which is very important, is that it is symmetric. So the, the, the governing council, the ECB, views upward and downward deviations from this target as equally undesirable. Uh, we don't like high inflation, we don't like deflation or low uh, inflation. Uh, and so it, this is a very important uh, part of, of this uh, announcement that the 2% is not a ceiling, which is sometimes what uh, how our previous uh, sort of definition of, of price stability was uh, perceived. Um, Two percent, of course, is, is, is very much a norm uh, amongst central banks in, in the global economy. If you look at uh, the Fed, uh, the Bank of England, Bank of Japan, they all have uh, two percent uh, inflation times. The second important change uh, in the strategy uh, statement is that the governing council recognizes that in order to maintain this symmetric inflation outcomes around 2%, it has to take into account the effect of lower bound on interest rates. Again, the fact that interest rates cannot go very negative. I mean, the current uh, policy rate, uh, most important policy rate, has minus 50 basis points. We probably can reduce that more, but not by, uh, by, by much. So what are the implications of that uh, recognition? I mean, the first implication I already mentioned, and that is that we need other instruments. And that's, again, that's the asset purchases, that's the forward guidance, that's the lending operations, the refinancing operations towards uh, the banks. And so part of the statement uh, is to recognize that these unconventional, what used to be called unconventional tools, are part of our tool set, in particular in the vicinity of this lower bound. A second implication uh, that you will find in, in the monetary policy strategy statement is that the fact that you are, that the central bank is more constrained in responding to negative shocks to uh, inflation means that it has to take especially forceful and persistent actions to avoid that these negative deviations become entrenched, that they affect inflation expectations, that they de-anchor inflation uh, expectations. So this realization that when you are close to the proximity of the lower bound, that policy needs to be persistent, that it needs to be patient, that you cannot, that you should avoid a premature tightening is a very important uh, part of uh, the uh, overall framework. And of course, in those circumstances, it, it can also mean that inflation for a temporary period is moderately above the, the inflation target because of this, uh, these, these, these patient uh, policies. And the third implication is that, uh, I mean, other policies can, can help in those circumstances, and particularly fiscal policies. And that is something that we have seen in response to the, the pandemic. Fiscal and monetary policy have worked hand in hand to uh, provide sort of the bridge uh, to companies, to households, across uh, across the, the pandemic. And particularly when interest rates are concerned, uh, fiscal policy seems to be uh, more, more, more effective in, in stabilizing the economy and helping also to increase the, the space for, for monetary policy. 
Thank you very much, Frank. You uh, explained the change in the 2% and also the importance of the zero lower bound. Are there any other topics um, that are relevant to European citizens that are mentioned or addressed in this strategy? Um, yes, I mean, uh, I would like to here mention two uh, specific uh, topics. Uh, the first one is the uh, concern that we've heard in many of our listening events, uh, particularly by, by, by young uh, households, about uh, the costs of uh, housing, of shelter, and particular the owner occupied about, uh, by housing. Um, this uh, is something that the governing council uh, took uh, very seriously, and uh, therefore it, it recommends to uh, Eurostat, which is uh, the European Statistical uh, Institute uh, that is responsible for the construction of uh, the price index, to actually include uh, measures of owner-occupied housing in our HICP index, the index that we, we use to measure uh, in, in inflation. Now, uh, of course, the ECB realizes that this is a, a multi-year uh, project, um, but uh, and in the meantime, we will continue to use the HICP, so the, the, the main index uh, to measure uh, inflation and, and price stability, uh, but we will also uh, include uh, initial estimates of owner-occupied housing costs in our set of indicators that we uh, regularly use to, to, to measure uh, inflationary pressures. And so that should uh, allow over time to have a more representative index of uh, the full uh, uh, cost of, uh, of, of, of living. The second um, important uh, concern, of course, that we heard was, was climate change. Uh, and uh, of course, also there, and this is really a new element, in, in our uh, monetary policy strategy. Also there, uh, the Governing Council has, has committed to take into account climate change considerations in all aspects of our monetary policy and, and of central banking uh, more uh, generally. And it uh, has basically committed to, to an action plan. Uh, there was a, a press release uh, last week, uh, which sort of uh, gives uh, some of the details and the timeline of that action plan uh, to, 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 to do so. Um, this is uh, a, a crucial uh, element uh, of, 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 of our monetary policy strategy for, for a number of reasons. I mean, first of all, climate change and the policies to, to combat it, to, to, to address it, uh, do have a profound impact uh, on the economy. I mean, we, we all uh, are witnessing you know, the weather shocks that, that we, we face. They affect harvests, they affect prices. Uh, and so they, they affect uh, the working of the economy. And as a central bank, we need to upgrade our tools to, to really understand the impact and take those effects into account when uh, we make monetary policy decisions uh, within, within our uh, mandate. The second reason is that uh, climate change, of course, comes with risks. Uh, there will be sectors that will be affected, that will benefit. Some of them will have to change their uh, business model. Uh, so it's important that as a central bank, uh, we have a big balance sheet, that we really assess those risks uh, correctly. And so uh, risk assessment, uh, upgrading our risk assessment is, is, is another part uh, of, uh, of, of, of our uh, sort of action plan. And, and a third uh, reason is, um, or a third element uh, I, I would like to, to highlight here, is uh, the importance of, of disclosures and, and making clear that uh, indeed uh, the transparency about where those risks uh, are is important and how to take those into account in uh, our collateral framework and in our uh, asset purchase uh, program. So I would highlight these two uh, sort of important uh, additional elements of our new strategy. Thank you. As part of the strategy review, the ECB uh, reached out to many stakeholders. On the one hand, you have the experts, the academics, and also um, citizens and civil society organizations. What um, do you think has the ECB learned from listening or engaging with all of these different stakeholders as part of the review? Well, thank you. Thank you very much. Uh, um, I mean, a big difference in this strategy review compared to the 2003, in which I was also 
uh, involved is indeed uh, the enormous uh, outreach uh, that we have done to, to, to many uh, stakeholders. If I counted correctly, uh, we had like 17 uh, events organized not only here at ECB, but also by the national uh, central banks of uh, the Euro system. Um, and of course, we received many, many uh, suggestions and, and comments by, by citizens all over uh, the Euro area. We also listen to, to expert audiences, to academics, uh, to analysts, the European Parliament, civil society uh, organizations like uh, the ones you are representing, and as I mentioned, uh, individual citizens, and also our own uh, staff. Of course, the, the messages were sort of diverse and, and depended very much uh, on, on not the, the personal perspective of uh, the, the respondents, but many of the issues that we heard we already discussed in, in our conversation. I mean, one is, is climate change. Another one was the affordability of housing for particularly for young uh, people. Uh, of course, the employment situation uh, during the pandemic uh, is uh, an important concern for, for many uh, citizens. And, and then finally, also the side effects of our non-conventional policies like the negative interest rates was uh, an important uh, uh, question and, and, and concern. So many of these elements we have uh, we have looked into and we have analyzed, but one element that um, I would like to to highlight uh, at this point is also the importance of clear, uh, consistent, and credible uh, communication, uh, because uh, clearly uh, our often technical style of communicating may be okay for 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 experts and for uh, academics. But it's not always easily understood uh, by, by citizens and civil society uh, more uh, generally. And so, so one of the lessons uh, learned is, is indeed to improve our communication, uh, both of the decisions that the Governing Council makes, but also about what are we as the central bank for uh, the euro area about? What are our goals? How do we try to, to achieve them? Um, because that's very important to, to, to maintain uh, the trust in our institution, which is, is really uh, important for the effectiveness of our monetary policy. And so going forward, we will, on, on the one hand, uh, try to have sort of a more direct uh, communication, more accessible communication, also more visual communication on our monetary policy uh, decisions, on the one hand. And on the other hand, uh, we have had a very good experience with the listening events and hope uh, and the Governing Council commits to continue this type of uh, bilateral outreach. Thank you very much, Frank, for elaborating on the pillars of this new strategy. I am sure that by now, many of the participating organizations will have questions or comments <coughs> that they'd like to raise. So we'll now be opening the floor to your questions for the remaining half an hour. You can start um, raising your questions by raising your virtual hand. Your virtual hand should be a small button that is located on the right hand side of your screen. It should be located underneath the participants list. And once I see that you've raised your virtual hand, I will call your name and my lovely colleagues in the background will connect you. So just bear with us for a moment or two, as it might take uh, a while to get you upgraded. And then whenever you're ready, uh, feel free to take the floor. You'll be automatically unmuted, and we do encourage you to turn on your camera as well, so that we can see you when you ask your question. Please introduce yourself first and your organization before you uh, address your comment to Frank. And do remember to lower your electronic hand after you've asked the question, as this makes it easier for us to identify if you'd like to take the floor again. And with that, I'm going to take a look to see if we've got somebody who's raised their question already. I can see the first um, question comes from Ms. Orintuya Batsaikan. I hope I pronounced your name correctly, and I apologize in advance if I did not. Please bear with us for one moment, and you should be upgraded shortly. Uh, hello? Hello. Hi, can you hear me? 
Yes, absolutely. Thank you. Thank you very much. Um, I'm Murin Toya Batahan. Uh, I'm an economist here at uh, Positive Money Europe, uh, an NGO based uh, in Brussels. Um, I have a question on the targeted longer term refinancing operations. Uh, given its volume, uh, the Caltros uh, represent one of the most important ECB monetary policy operations, uh, yet they were not included in the climate roadmap. Also, uh, uh, green cultures in particular have been deemed as an interesting idea by uh, President Lagarde at the European Parliament during the monetary dialogue in September 2020. Uh, so my question is, uh, was there any discussion on greening the refinancing operations during the strategy review process? Thank you. Thank you very much. Um, well, first of all, on, on your question on, on green teltro. So, um, of course, in, in, in the work stream, we had a work stream that uh, looked into how the relationship between climate change and uh, monetary policy, uh, a, a, a number of uh, um, <clears throat> possible measures and uh, modifications of our uh, operational framework were uh, looked into. Uh, this initially included uh, um, uh, some of the measures that uh, you, 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 you mentioned, but in terms of the actual uh, action plan, uh, the, the governing uh, council decided to, to focus particularly on the issue of disclosures, because this can uh, have uh, a very beneficial impact also on uh, sustainable finance by increasing uh, the transparency uh, of, of the market and, and, and sort of openness, openness about where uh, climate uh, exposures and climate uh, risks uh, are. And, and secondly, by, by focusing on uh, both the, the collateral system, which of course is part of our lending uh, operations, uh, and uh, the uh, corporate sector uh, purchase program. So our uh, existing uh, uh, programs, rather than uh, setting up uh, new programs, which of course also in, in the context of, of uh, our price stability objective at this point uh, uh, would, uh, would, uh, would not be, um, uh, granted. On, on the question of uh, sort of green asset purchase program, again, uh, it, it basically it's, it's the same uh, answer. It, it was seen as more important to actually look into our existing uh, corporate sector purchase uh, program, where, uh, as you may have seen from the action plan, uh, we, we will have a, a work stream looking into the issue of uh, market neutrality and market efficiency and how that may uh, uh, lead to sort of alternative uh, benchmarks for, for our purchase programs. Thank you. Thank you. We've got the next question coming up from Mr. Mauricio Vargas from Greenpeace. Hello. Hello. We can hear you. Hello, can you hear me? Yes, sir, we can. Me? Yes. No. Hello? Hello. I can't hear you. Maybe that's a technical problem. That's strange. We can hear you and see you very well. Maybe we will try to sort out this technical problem and continue with the next speaker for the moment. And we'll try again to, to upgrade you at a later stage to hear your question. So we will take the next uh, questioner for now. This next question comes from Ms. Alessia Del Vasto from Positive Money again. Hello. Hi. I hope you can hear me and see me. Yes, we can. Okay, great. Uh, hi, again, it's uh, Alessia Basso from Positive Money Europe. Um, so, uh, 
as an organization, of course, we recognize the importance of setting inflation target at 2% right now. But well, unfortunately, the ECB has constantly missed the target in the, in the past year. So we were wondering whether, um, well, if the ECB continues to, to struggle with, uh, with reaching the inflation target, will it consider introducing new instruments, new policy tools such as uh, helicopter money? Thank you. Thank you for the presentation. Thank you very much uh, for your for your question. Um, I mean, at uh, a general point, uh, I mean, the statement uh, does explicitly say that uh, obviously uh, not only um, uh, did we look into the existing instruments and, and sort of confirmed that they are effective and that they have contributed to uh, uh, avoiding uh, risks of deflation and, and, and supporting the economy and uh, the uh, reflation of, of, of the economy. Uh, but also, if, if necessary, the Governing Council, as it has always uh, done over the past uh, years, will, of course, consider uh, other tools, uh, if, if, if appropriate, to achieve uh, its, uh, its inflation uh, target. And, and, of course, that's where sort of uh, the, the commitment to, particularly in response to, to, to negative shocks, to have uh, an especially forceful and persistent uh, response and action uh, is uh, is is important. That's where uh, that is is backed up by by this commitment to use uh, other instruments. Now, on the the specific uh, example uh, of uh, money drops, of course, there uh, it, it very much uh, depends on on the details. But uh, we didn't look in as part of the strategy review into the details and the parameters of particular alternative uh, instruments. This was seen as part of of sort of the stance discussion rather than uh, the strategy discussion. And of course, particularly uh, money drops uh, in some uh, variants has, has a number of, of, of legal and, and economic questions and also interact with fiscal policy, which, uh, which would uh, raise concerns. Um, but in terms of the general uh, stance, uh, the Governing Council is, is, is open to consider alternative instruments. Thank you. We're going to see if we have anyone else um, who would like to ask a question. Please feel free to raise your electronic hands now. And then when you've raised your hand, I'll be able to pull you out and my colleagues will be able to upgrade you so you can take the floor. We have one more question from Adwa de la Costa. Also from Positive Money, I believe. Hello. 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 Hi. Hi. Can you hear me? Yes. Yes, we can. That's great. Thank you. I'm Adra de la Costa from Positive Money Europe, and I have a question on the engagement with the public. Um, so recently, from May 21st to July 2nd of this year, the Bank of England has opened a consultation on options for greening its corporate bond purchase scheme. And the bank will implement its new approach on the matter on the fourth, court, on the fourth quarter of 2021. And in the past months, uh, President Lagarde has affirmed the ECB intends to increase the involvement of the public. And today you have confirmed this by highlighting the success of the ECB in recent events. Um, Indeed, the large participation to the to this scheme and to the consultation on a, on a digital euro have shown society's great interest in being involved in the ECB decision. So my question would be, would the ECB consider a consultation on the corporate sector purchase program to improve its engagement with the public? Thank you. Thank you very much uh, for your question. I mean, um, in the press release and the the annex, which uh, uh, consists of uh, the action plan, all the various elements, and also the timeline of uh, the various uh, areas in which uh, uh, we, uh, as as a central bank, will take into account uh, climate change considerations in in our strategy, are are very much uh, laid out. Um, at the same time, uh, and and this is also uh, has been also made very clear again in the in the statement. Uh, the governing council uh, has indeed uh, committed to have a regular uh, exchange uh, and outreach uh, with uh, civil society with uh, the general uh, public and um, 
Uh, of course, uh, I think differently from what we had over the past uh, year, it should not only be about listening, but also about uh, explaining and interacting. Um, whether this type of exchange will be explicit uh, in, in terms of uh, on the specific uh, program, I mean, that's something uh, that at this point I can't really uh, say, uh, but uh, for sure uh, there will be interaction on, on the various uh, aspects of, of, of uh, the action plan. Thank you very much. And it seems that we can try again with uh, Maurizio Vargas from Greenpeace. Please bear with us and you should be upgraded shortly. Hello, Hello. can you now hear me? Yep. Yes. Okay, great. Well, thank you, Mr. Smith, for, for your presentation. And uh, just let me comment that from my point of view, the strategy, at least related to your uh, climate plans, don't seem to be very ambitious to me. But uh, perhaps you can convince me otherwise. So I'm, I'm really excited. And I have um, two questions. The, the first question is, what, what is the concrete implication of the new climate strategy that you proposed? I mean, you provided a plan, but I think it's it's quite vague, no? So um, therefore, for example, it would be nice to know, for instance, what concrete changes the strategy will be for, for your CSPP portfolio. So could you elaborate a little bit on, on the potential changes we might see? And uh, the other question I have is, why haven't you taken any concrete actions yet? I mean, um, you mentioned the urgency of the climate crisis, but um, your plans, like your timetable, um, doesn't seem to be very ambitious neither. So um, why haven't we seen any concrete results? And uh, therefore, uh, a third question um, from, from a kind of precautionary perspective, wouldn't it be necessary to end at least some support for very carbon intensive companies right now, you know, until you have a detailed plan? So um, thank you and uh, happy to listen to your answers. Okay, th thank you very much uh, for, for this question. Um, I mean, I, I would back to, to, to differ and, and, and uh, sort of claim that uh, the action plan that the governing council has uh, decided on is quite uh, ambitious uh, and uh, with clear sort of timeline and deliverables. What's of course true is that still a, a lot of work needs to be uh, done in order to take some of the concrete actions uh, that uh, you seem to, to uh, adjust. And of course, uh, I should also um, emphasize that some of those actions also depend on the progress uh, that is being made at the European level you know, in terms of the, the various initiatives that uh, uh, the, the EU uh, has, has, has taken. So we're not acting in uh, isolation. But if you look at, uh, first of all, the timeline, which is you know, uh, ultimately within a four year period, but there's two, two, two steps, uh, but also the breadth of uh, the actions, uh, then I think we, 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 we compare very favorable to, to any other central bank in terms of uh, the ambition uh, that we have. Uh, in terms of concrete actions and, and quick wins, I mean, let me just remind you that we are already, have already taken some, some actions, no? For example, in terms of including uh, sustainability linked bonds in our asset uh, purchase program, in terms of uh, announcing that we will uh, disclose no, the climate risks uh, in our non-monetary policy portfolio, and probably one of the, the first uh, uh, actions that uh, may follow uh, relatively in, in the first part of, of this, this timeline will be to do the same for, for our monetary policy uh, portfolio. So it's not just words. Uh, we actually are also uh, following up and, and, and uh, acting. And uh, I believe it is uh, sort of a wide ranging action plan that uh, covers, of course, our core, the core of our business, which is uh, you know, how uh, can we better understand the impact of climate change on our mandate to achieve price stability, but also you know, the, our risk assessment. I mean, part 
of the uh, action plan, for example, is also to uh, examine and investigate and make sure that credit rating agencies have the uh, uh, relevant methodologies to take into account uh, climate uh, change uh, risks. So there's a, a catalytic role here that uh, the, the bank ECB wants to uh, wants to, to to play. But finally, then uh, we are also looking at what I think are probably the most important parts of our uh, operational framework. That is the, the corporate sector purchase program and our uh, collateral framework. Um, uh, in, in terms of your last question, I mean, should you already uh, uh, exclude? Um, I mean, this is, again, it will be subject of, of uh, what is it, line uh, nine uh, of the uh, of the um, of the action uh, plan uh, point uh, nine, but it's not uh, obvious that that is actually the most effective way of uh, uh, in, in terms of reducing climate change risks because many of those those comments will actually have to be some of the drivers of uh, change we 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 hope. Um, so uh, extreme uh, decisions like 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 that may not be the the, the most optimal. Thank you for that, Frank. We have the next question from Mr. Roger Casale from the Europe People's Forum. This is just a kind reminder to please lower your electronic hand after you've uh, taken the floor so that we can see if you'd like to take the floor again and an encouragement for everybody to raise their electronic hands and take the floor. Thank you very much. I'm, I think you can hear me. I'm not sure you can see me. Sorry. We can hear I you. Hear well. You can hear me. Okay. So, um, well, thank you uh, again. And um, thank you also for in the earlier presentation, both in the question and in the answers, for the discussion around the engagement of citizens and civil society in drawing up the strategic uh, plan. I think all of us who are engaged in this enterprise of uh, promoting citizen participation, something that we focus on at Europe's People's Forum, uh, are very well aware uh, that it's an easy thing to talk about and it's a difficult thing to do. So I wonder um, if you could comment on the on the challenges and the difficulties uh, that you faced in reaching out to civil society and to citizens in particular. Uh, what you have learned from uh, how you went about doing that, that you would um, want to apply in relation to how you conduct future uh, consultations and engagement of uh, citizens. Um, you mentioned that you're, there's going to be another phase of the consultation and that's very welcome. Um, I'm sure you agree that it's very valuable information that comes about from the engagement with uh, citizens and civil society. Um, perhaps there's even, and this would be my second question, um, the thought in your mind that it would be good to put such consultations on a more permanent basis. Thank you. Thank you for, for your question and, and, and particularly on the last uh, suggestion. I mean, I will just take it as a, as a, as a, as a useful uh, suggestion. I mean, in terms of, of our experience uh, in, in, in reaching out uh, to uh, no, various parts uh, of, of society in, in the euro area of course i mean the main the first thing that comes to your mind about what are the challenges and the difficulties for an institution european institution like uh, the ecb is that of course the audience are very diverse in a number of ways but i mean first and foremost in terms of you no know, language and and and, and culture uh, you no know, i mean uh, the our union is 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 uh, 
is is uh, is, is about unity uh, with diversity, and so to to ensure that sort of that uh, diversity is uh, is acknowledged and that we can reach out to 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 the different parts uh, of of the society. I mean, is a, is a challenge, uh, even a bigger challenge than I would say in the national uh, environment. Fortunately, uh, we are a not only an ECB here uh, in Frankfurt, but also uh, a system, the euro system of national central banks. And I mean, it's it's obvious that the NCBs, the national central banks, uh, will play, have played, will continue to play a, a key role in this uh, outreach uh, to to uh, local uh, uh, audience. I mean, our at the ECB, of course, our comparative advantage is to to reach out to pan-European civil society organizations like uh, yours, to the European uh, Parliament, uh, to uh, you know, other European institutions, uh, and of course, more generally through through our communication on our website. Um, but an important role uh, clearly has to be played by uh, the national uh, central banks. And so they are, of course, very much on board uh, on uh, this commitment to uh, to have more regular uh, outreach uh, programs uh, with uh, with citizens. Um, I mean, the other uh, challenge I, I would uh, sort of highlight, and, and I think I already mentioned it in, in the introductory uh, Q and A, is uh, comes from this uh, di diversity, but but is also more general about you know, the difficulties to to uh, reach out uh, to citizens in a sort of a direct, clear, uh, coherent, uh, uh, easily accessible uh, fashion. So what we learned is that actually the knowledge of uh, the ECB, of the central bank, uh, of the euro um, is uh, not very great. And so we need to uh, really make more efforts in, in explaining uh, really what we are uh, about. Um, and so that's an impo another important uh, challenge that uh, hopefully in, in the coming months and years uh, we'll, we'll try to, uh, we will try to, to address. So I would say these are, are probably the two, uh, to do, the two most important uh, challenges uh, that come to my mind. Thank you very much, Frank. I can see that we have the next question from Mark Beckman, also from Positive Money. Hello. Um, can just confirm if you hear me well? Yep. Yes, we can. Thanks a lot. I just wanted to come back to the, to the last question, actually, on, on citizen engagement, because we as Positive Money have been organizing a big outreach project called the European Citizens Bank, where we built a platform similar to the, the Conference on the Future of the European Union, where we put up content on the monetary policy issues, where we organized webinars, where citizens could learn about current debates, and where we organized citizen assemblies, where we um, drew citizens uh, into a one-day, two-day workshop and let them discuss monetary policy issues. And so we've been doing that project in several countries and some countries are still to come and we're assembling the recommendations that citizens formulate in these assemblies together. And, and so my question would be, if you are in the spirit of um, your commitment to public engagement, the citizens would be interested in, in meeting with these citizens who came up with these recommendations uh, and maybe to have a session where we can compare and contrast what the citizens in our outreach program have come up with and, and maybe the, the outcome of, of the new strategic review that, that you now finalized. Thanks. Thank you. Uh, of course, we are, we are aware of uh, your, your initiative and, and particularly our communications department uh, very much uh, sort of follows uh, what is going on. And I would say that it's, it's very important to, to have those uh, initiatives because uh, basically I think it it, uh, uh, it can can help uh, better understand uh, what the ECB, what monetary policy uh, is is about, and 
of course, uh, subject to uh, to uh, sort of what the, the communications department is doing. Uh, I'm, I'm sure we would be be happy to to uh, to interact and to 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 contribute where we can. Thank you. So this is just um, to let you know that we have got a little bit more time in case anyone else would like to take the floor. Please raise your electronic hands now. Otherwise, allow me to take the floor, Frank, and ask uh, a question. Seeing as the last review was such a long time ago, um, do we already know when the next review is going to take place? Um, yes, in, in the sense that uh, the Governing Council, in, in its statement, indeed, uh, also announced that uh, from now on, it will periodically assess uh, its monetary policy strategy. And so, uh, initiatives for, for future uh, ideas and so on will be very useful as an input for these future uh, assessments. And it has announced that uh, sort of the next uh, sort of meeting point uh, will be in 2025, so in, in about, uh, expected to be in 2025, so in about four years uh, time. And, and we very much uh, hope, I mean, this is very much in, in the spirit you know, of continuing uh, this, uh, this conversation about uh, what we as a central bank uh, are about and how we, we go about in, in achieving price stability and achieving uh, the mandate uh, in, in the best way for, for the well-being of, of, uh, of citizens in the, in the area. Thank you. I can see that we do have one last question, and this question comes from Mr. Mauricio Vargas from Greenpeace again. Okay, yeah, well, uh, I'll take advantage, uh, advantage of the chance to uh, ask a second question. Um, it's, of course, related to your climate action plan. And uh, there's another thing which I think remained very unclear and uh, would be very happy if you could help me to understand what's meant with um, the following sentence. In when it comes to the CSPP, um, the ECB or you were writing that um, uh, corporates have to be aligned with at minimum EU legislation implementing the Paris Agreement through climate change related metrics or, and that's what I really don't understand, commitments of the issuers to such goals. Um, I think it's really a, a good thing that you refer to EU legislation and the Paris Agreement, but I totally don't understand why you implement a sentence where you're saying, and on the same level, you accept commitment of the issue itself to 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 such goals. So, what what what's the meaning of of the second part of the sentence? Yeah, I'm, I'm not sure. Uh, I understand uh, sort of the the subtleties of of those two 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 parts. Uh, but I mean the uh, sort of idea in in general terms is indeed to to make uh, sort of uh, commitments of uh, some of the issuers to uh, an, an implementation uh, to the EU legislation that is uh, related to the, the Paris uh, Agreement to make that sort of an eligibility uh, criteria. Now, the way in which one uh, does that, uh, again, needs to be uh, discussed. Uh, no, uh, is it uh, and again, this is this is uh, uh, will also be sort of a function of uh, making sure you no know, there is a, there is a, a, enough of a transition uh, period. Um, but but sort of the general idea is really to to provide incentives to uh, issuers to uh, basically uh, um, uh, uh, commit or to 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 align. No, their 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 own uh, plans uh, with respect to uh, climate change uh, with the uh, EU legislation uh, implementing the Paris uh, Accord. Thank you very much, Frank. I can see that we don't have any more questions. So with that, um, I would like to close this seminar. 
And thank you all very much for participating. Um, thanks to you and your active and lively contributions. We had a very uh, engaging seminar. And I'd also like to take this opportunity to say thank you very much to you, Frank, for taking the time out of your day to explain uh, the new strategy and what it's all about. As usual, we are very interested in hearing your feedback. So if you have one moment, we'll be posting a link to a survey in the chat function. And it should take about two or three minutes to fill out. And it would really help us to improve the way we structure these uh, seminars better and to tailor them more to, towards your needs. So we would really appreciate if you could fill out the survey. And otherwise, there isn't much left for me to say other than to wish you a lovely afternoon and hopefully a nice summer break. If you'd like to get in touch with us in the meantime, please do so by sending us an email at civilsociety at ecb.europa.eu. Thank you very much and have a lovely afternoon.